Hello, hi, my name is Mary Kay and thank you so much for stopping by for the returning subscribers. Thank you for the new subscribers. We say hi by hitting that subscribe button. So on today's video, we are going to be making a women's cap. And these are just but a few things that you're going to need. The length for the cap, it needs to be longer than the front panels. You're going to need your shoulder length and you're going to need your arm depth remember to bring a tape measure as i always say it's your best friend if you happen to make it you can send it to my dm on ig at mary Kay's designs i will love 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 seeing them also please watch to the end and i hope you have as much fun making yours and watching it as i did making mine enjoy so we're going to be making this cape in f with four parts we have the main character which is just basically the cape itself this is the part that brings it all together we have that one and then we have the block the back support and then we have the front piece and the other front piece so um this pattern is half double just basically that and that is what you're going to be working just plain half doubles so grab your hook yarn and tape measure because you just you're going to really really need them and um i would advise using the um the medium yarn uh which is equivalent to a 3.5 millimeter hook because it's this kind of stuff just doesn't require to be too bulky you know so let us start so i'm just going to first of all uh, make a plain block which is this so let us start grab your yarn and let's get ready okay as always we do not make a chaining row we work the first row and the chaining row together like bosses so it saves a lot of time a lot of calculations and just basically it's a time saver so let us start you have your slip knot chain three that is the only chaining we'll be doing after you've chained three you're going to yarn over and insert your hook in the very first stitch that you made the one that is very farthest from you yarn over pull through it you're going to have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through just the first one and then yarn over and pull through everything to make your half double now the first yarn over we did that was our chaining row and then the three that we pulled that was our half double now that is just the first stitch the next stitch you're going to yarn over twist your work there will be some two loops at the very end insert your hook yarn over pull through three loops on your hook Yarn over, pull through the first one to make your chain and grow. And then yarn over to make your half double for the first row. Last time, yarn over, twist your work. And then just insert in the two loops you can see at the edge, both loops. Then yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook. Yarn over pull through the first one to make a chaining row and then we make our half double so that is just basically it now here's what i need to tell you and warn you about this pattern is going to decrease so just as you make um okay one of the rules that you have to follow first of all is the back should be longer in length than the front and uh this is my back and front it's just this is my back and then this is my wait this is my back <laughs> this is my front and that is just the length difference it's just tiny but it's there and that's what i want you to consider now when we are working through the back loops 
it's going to decrease. That is just a given fact. You're going to have a bit of decrease in inches. And I would calculate it within one, one and a half or one to two inches. So keep an eye out on that. Now, you're going to make these stitches to the length that you need, whether it's the front or whether it's the back. Now, for the back support, not the cape, just the blocked back support, we're going to be making it in length to this because we have just we have the increase where we're increasing up uh, we this is the original row and then we're just going to keep increasing until we have our desired arm um below our arm portion does that make sense yes this is the below arm portion and we're just going to keep increasing until we have it i think mine is 2 to 2.5 inches and um, just once you have that, that's when you're going to add in the arm portion. This is the arm depth. And this is the part below our armpits. Now, this length, the first, uh, the, the first row that you make, that is the number of stitches you're going to work into the back support that way when you just come to attach it's going to be so easy as they are the same in length you just attach that and i find that so seamless and easier instead of having to decrease to make the curve and all that you could just do this just make it the same as the first row of our front panel before the increase okay so i will meet you back when i have my length and remember this is just a sample so i'm not going to be making an extremely long one but this is what we're going to be working with now one thing i need you to know is um for the back support when you have the length like i've explained you're not going to do any increases or decreases you're just going to turn your work and work through back loops until you have your back length that's it so it's just it's just going to be a plain um a plain block no increases just no decreases in short what i mean is the same way you go, we're going to work in through our shoulder panel shoulder length that is what you're just going to do ignoring the increases there's no increases or decreases in the back support panel now let us just start with let us start now with increasing um for our uh, below the armpits now what we are going to do here with the increasing is the same thing we're going to do on this other side we're going to increase on one side and decrease on the other side so keep that in mind and follow what i will be doing so we just we're going to be working with one normal row one increase no more increase no more increase that is just how we're going to keep alternating now remember we have our first normal just as a reminder the length that you have right now measure it and then just continue and add around two inches because like i said this is going to shrink and you're going to be left with just less inches than you expected so we've done our normal row we are alternating to our increasing row chain one turn your work and like i just i said before i always prefer chaining one because when i chain two it confuses me a lot so i'm going to chain one then yarn over back loop stitches it's the stitch farthest from you the stitch on this side this finger this side that is just a stitch that is farthest from you and that is the back loop now yarn over and we're going to be doing the invisible increase we have an invisible decrease and invisible increase now first step you're going to yarn over like i have and then you're going to insert your hook in the very last stitch the back loop stitch yarn over pull through three loops on your hook and this is where we get to make our half double yarn over through everything that is a half double then yarn over again and in the same same stitch but now in both loops same stitch 
but both loops that is why you're going to put your second half double to make our increase we're going to continue working through back loop stitches only for our half double insert your hook yarn over pull through make your half double back loop stitches just the stitch farthest from you the only point you get to work through both loops is when you're making your increase and when you're finishing your row all right now you're going to continue doing that until you get to the end of your stitch and uh, the end of your row and i'll meet you there remember when you get to the end you're going to be putting your loop your stitch in both loops it just makes the work better and firmer so both loops at the end yarn over and pull through everything now chain one and then go on ahead and make your normal row because remember like i said normal normal row increase normal increase normal increase so make your normal row and i will meet you here at the end of the row and over both loops both loops chain one turn your work remember now this is the increasing row yarn over to make our increase you're going to need to put two loops in the same stitch and how are we going to do that we're going to put our first stitch in the back loop stitch and our second stitch in both loops in the same stitch that is just what we call an invisible increase and then proceed that is what you're going to need to repeat until you have the length of your under armpit and uh, I think that could play between 2, 2.5 or 3 depending on the size of your bust. That is just honestly what counts the most um, and, the size, uh, and the size requires to be at the middle of your armpit all the way to the crevice of your bust where it's just going to be to where it just curves a little bit higher so this is what i mean this is going to be the middle it, this is the middle part where we're going to connect the back and the front and the back is going to meet at the center of my side here now from here all the way here this is the under part this is the part that connects all the way to my shoulder I hope that makes the most sense so you're going to continue doing that until you have the number of rows that you need and like I said tape measure is your best friend so continue doing that and I will meet you with a sustainable length where you can see a bit of difference so I have um, a reasonable amount of work to continue as you can see there's just a bit of increase that is notable so this is my normal row that i am working and when we get here this is where we put our shoulder length now before you put you work on your shoulder length which is this we're going to need to reference back to this our cape just uh one side is an increase one side is an increase the other side is a decrease oh this is the increase side the side where we start with our first row is the increase and the side where we get to finish off is the decrease now just the length from uh, where we start all the way to where we increased is equivalent to half of your um arm depth or circumference of your arm so um when i make sweaters and i mean circumference like this but now on your what is it called between your shoulder and your elbow that part so my circumference like this is normally just either 12 or 11 depends with the type of pattern because just like this pattern this stretches a lot so just i'll do like 12 now what i 
did was I divided it by two and I got six. In the length increase, we're going to continue making the six inches that we have divided. So if your circumference is 16, you're going to divide it by two and you will make eight inches of increase. So since we are in understanding or in matters of the length for your arm depth, we are going to start making the arm depth. Now, I'll just put my last stitch here. Remember, both loops, that is the last stitch. Now, you're going to yarn over twist you said work there is the two loops from the previous half double you've just put insert your hook in those two loops yarn over pull through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through the first one yarn over and make your half double now this is the same thing that we did when we were starting so that is just what you're going to continue doing two loops on the side yarn over pull through th three loops yarn over pull through the first one three loops again yarn over make your half double you're going to continue making this until you have the length that you need for your arm um, depth again remember you're going to need to add to the original length you're going to understand why when we get to attach all our pieces together so that this makes sense. Now, I'm just going to stop there so that I can proceed to explain. Now, we're just going to assume this is the length that you need. When you get to the end, yarn over, uh, make a one stitch, twist your work. Now, this is just where we get to work on plain rows. There's no increase, there's no decrease, just normal rows. And I love normal rows. Back loop stitches only row after row until you have your shoulder length. Row after row, after row until you have this. Now, just this is what I need. This is what you need, your shoulder length. Remember, we started by increasing and then we've just worked our arm depth with an increase. And then we're going to work just on our shoulder length. We are done with the front panel, both front panels, left and right. This is done. Now, just this normal rows that you're going to be making is the same thing I said you're going to do in our back support. It's just basically a block. As you can see, there's no increases, no decreases. It's just a normal block. That is what you're going to do. And we are done with our third piece. Now, to our final piece, which is just the most important thing. Because if we mess up on this one, we're going to be losing the pattern. Now, I'm just going to fold it here a bit. As you can see, we have the increase here. Uh, just we have the increase like like I explained earlier we just we have these normal I mean not normal um, alternative increases we have normal row increase normal increase normal increase going on until you just have the length that you need if remember what we talked about if you have 16 inches of arm depth you're going to divide them by two and make the increase into eight inches that goes for 12 inches, you're going to make 6 inches. 24 inches, you'll make 12 inches. Now, since you're together up to there, we're just going to undo this up to here. We're just going to assume this is where we finish off the increase. Just this is where we have our 5 inches. What do you do? You're just going to take like a stitch marker to mark this point. Now, for me, this point just here, this is where we get to put to attach our 
panel. This is where it's just going to start. As you can see, this side goes this way. And this is where my panel is just going to start. Yeah. Now, you get to choose. Are you going to mark the end of your increase or the row after the increase? Which is completely up to you. But just know that here, this is where we get to start. This is where our shoulder panel starts. So all this, this is just the extra that we need to make the pattern. Our shoulder length starts here. Where you're going to put your stitch marker. And for all this to work, you're going to have two stitch markers at hand. So once you get here, you put your stitch marker, You then you just chain one, turn your row, and continue working. Plain normal rows, no increases, no decreases, back loop stitches, like I explained, all the way. So, this is what I am going to do. I'm going to work a few normal rows so that I come back and show you on how to, inc to decrease. Because that is what you're going to do on the other side. One side is an increase and the other one is a decrease so that it matches so that it matches uh, on both sides. So I'll just walk up like two, three rows. And then I come back, we do the decrease. So we have the few rows I was talking about. This is the side where we increased. There's just a slight increase on this side, as you can see. So like I said, one point where we're going to start our shoulder panel. Now, I need you to understand that in between the increase and the decrease side is just back length one shoulder to the other side this middle portion should be equivalent in length to the middle part mark this portion where we're going now to start decreasing so chain one turn your work after you've marked your position we are still going to be doing what we called an invisible decrease remember what we did in the first one was an invisible increase and now we're going to do an invisible decrease so going to yarn over you'll insert your hook in the back loop of the very first stitch and then twist it and put it in both loops of the second stitch yarn over pull through that and the next stitch you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through and there voila we have our decrease once again let's repeat that yarn over insert your loop your hook in the back loop of the very first stitch you have that twist your work insert your hook in both loops of the next stitch yarn over you're going to pull through that you'll have four stitches on your hook you're going to pull through the next one three stitches then you make your half double and then you proceed with normal stitches in back loop now next row remember is a plain normal row no decrease at the end, yeah, uh, chain one, twist your work, the decrease, you yarn over, insert your hook in the very first stitch through the back loop, twist your hook and insert it in the next stitch, both loops, yarn over, pull through the first stitch and the next stitch. Then you're going to make your half double. Yarn over and continue making normal half doubles in the back loop. After you're done with this row, you're just going to go to the next and make a normal row. And then a decrease, a normal row, and then a decrease until you get the same length as the increase portion we started with. That is the key. The length should be the same. And just what I mean, 
is this the length should be the same the length should be the same like that equal all right so now that we are done with that you're just going to do the attaching attaching that's what we're going to do now so grab your needle and you already have a yarn so just the attaching method is a method we've used before all the time it's the one i prefer to use so you're going to start with i'm going to show you with this uh the cape portion with the front panel so i'm just going to pick one and just so we have everything right i'm just going to place them accordingly that is just how it is like that and then just here's the trick that you're going to be doing remember you just you need to align them properly this side the increase should be facing the increase all right you're going to put them together like that you can use your stitch marker to hold them together for now so that it doesn't move and then just for safety purposes you can count the number of rows you have here and ensure they're the same number of rows you have because you're going to start attaching from this end just this end is the one that you're going to start attaching from here the end so that we come all the way across and make this so count the number of rows ensure they are right then pick your needle and you're going to start after counting you're going to start with your cap the point where you um where the number of rows end the ones that you need first things first you're going to hide your stitch you you're going to hide your yarn all through all through when you get to the end make a knot to begin you make that knot pull 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 you're going to just ensure that you've left a bit of the yarn which is just going to be um excess which you will cut off later now make a knot however you want however you feel is good for you after you make the knot, you're going to pull your yarn, blah, 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 and all that. Now, now, just this is where the real deal is. We're going to be alternating between the front and the back. For now, we start here. You insert your hook under, under the panel. That is where you're going to put it. And then pull going to go to the other side under the panel insert pull and this panel again insert pull the needle should be coming out towards you and then on the other side it should be going outside far from you it should be going like that and I still don't know the name of this method of attaching. And if you know, please do tell me. I've been asking and nobody tells me. But if you're watching and you know, just please holler. Tell me. So you're going to continue doing that. And I would love to state that this is just not the only method. There are so many other methods of attaching that you could use. But this is my preferred method because it doesn't have a front or back. All sides are clean and can be worn. So you're just going to continue until you get to the edge here. Which is where I'm going to meet you. Here we are. So we've just done that. Attached those two. And moving on. This is the either the increase or the decrease part depending on which side you're doing. Now what you're going to do because we've just ended here you can go ahead and fasten this stitch this um stitch here or you can make a knot however you want or you could just continue if you're sure it's secure 
what you do now because we've already gotten here you're going to fold it just slightly until you know it's straight once it is you're just now going to continue by you're just going to continue insert you hook here insert your hook pull remember it's under and then now the advantage with this side is that um we have visible loops you don't need to continue guessing so which is what you're going to aim for now you're just going to continue doing the same thing you insert in the loop and pull you keep folding it as you continue to so um as you continue it's just going to keep on bringing its shape and in the hook in the loop i mean and continue we've gotten to the edge of the increases or the decreases and now we're just on um the either the starting of our row or the ending of our work the starting of our work or the ending of our work point of doing this is so that our project is able to go on a straight line when we wear it instead of going backwards i don't know if that makes sense but so you can do the one inch or two depending with the length that you did for your arm taps remember the only reason why we just we need to do this we um needed to increase the length of our arm taps is because we need that remaining portion on uh the cape where your hand is visible where, where your hand is seen because you cannot attach all the way to the edge here we just need a bit a space where your hand is visible so you can go on and try yours and see if you do one inch it's going to be as straight as you want it if it's not you can just continue and do like up to here as long as you see you have a visible point this part as long as you have just a bit remainder of it should be more than one inch then continue stitching and attaching now it has to be either one inch or more i'm so happy you're here so thank you so much for watching to the end i hope you'll have as much fun making yours i will see you next week and again thank you for tuning in bye